That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat in it while all the people stood on the shore. Then he told them many things in parables, saying, A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came up and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plant. Still other seed fell on good soil, where it produced a crop, a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. Whoever has ears, let them hear. Listen then to what the parable of the sower means. When anyone hears a message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in their heart. This is the seed sown along the path. The seed falling on rocky ground refers to someone who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. The seed falling among the thorns refers to someone who hears the word, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word making it unfruitful. But the seed falling on good soil refers to someone who hears the word and understands it. This is the one who produces a crop, yielding a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. I come to you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Make yourself comfortable. Hopefully this won't be too painful. <laughs> Kidding. Uh, okay, so as we know within the church, these times, these summer times that we are, we are all, uh, the church has all this green on because this is a time for our growth. We are uh, rooting ourselves um, in Jesus. That's what we do this, this, in, in this whole summertime. And for all of the uh, chaos that COVID-19 has, has brought upon us, what it has done is God's thrown us indoors and uh, made us focus on a lot of things. Ourselves, spending a lot extra time with ourselves than we ever had before with our family members. Uh, but hopefully, I, I, I hope that there's also been extra time with God and that reflection on God. And they're during the summertime uh, where we are figuring out our way of of how do we be in the, in the world, in this, in this COVID world that we're in right now, that you're still taking the times where you're pulling back and playing it safe at home uh, to, to really allow that to be sort of like your monastic cave. So our, the godmothers and godfathers before us who really helped form our theology, a lot of it was done like in caves or in monasteries or in convents because they had the seclusion. They could remove themselves from the busyness of life and listen to God. So I, so I pray that that, is, that, that, that um, extra time you might have, uh, that you can take parts of it and say, God, what are you teaching me? What are you telling me? How are you wanting to form me? How can I spend some extra time with you? So Jesus right now is right there with you. Our, our gospels for these next weeks, he is going to be feeding you and sculpting you and planting more and more seeds inside you. Literally, the, the, the parables right now, as you heard today, is, is Jesus is going to be talking to you. He's, he's out there at the beach. He's out there on a boat because so many people have showed up and he's talking to them and who he's talking to are, are just the common man. And what does the common man do? Well, the common man is involved with agriculture. 
right? So seeds and weeds and roots and growth and cultivation. So he's speaking their language. He's not speaking the language that some of his ancestors spoke about, where they spoke more in royalty and used royal terms and images. Jesus is speaking directly to the common person, and that common person is used to dealing with their own crops. So seeds are going to be a big symbol that we're going to hear over these next couple weeks. So prepare your hearts over these next couple weeks to say, what is the seed that God is planting inside of me? Uh, we will hear about the mustard seed. That will be coming up. Right? A lot of imagery for us to use. Uh, and we have a garden ministry here at St. Mary's that uh, a, lot, a lot of reflection. I'm sure there's a lot of things we can do with our gar garden ministry uh, during this time as well. So today, the image that God gives us, though, is not the seed, I would like to think, the image that God is giving us is garden. And I think Jesus is looking at us, for, from my, my perspective, Jesus is looking at us in this parable and saying, you are the garden. God has given you, you, the gift that he has given you has made you a garden. And God is going to plant his seed in you from your baptismal day. Plant that seed in you, and it is totally up to you the responsibility falls upon you to receive it and to nurture it and to grow it. You know, or you also have the choice to step away and just let it get scorched and beaten down by the sun. So we know that there's other imagery that's been used for us before that you know, our body is a temple. This is my temple. So God told me to, to care for my temple. Uh, but Jesus also said, I will tear down the temple and raise it back up in three days. So the temple of looking at our body as a temple, that's man-made. Jesus is now saying, how about a garden? And this, this harkens us back to Eden, right? That the Bible is like all of these stories and all of these writers all in conversation with one another so we can get back to Eden, get back to the time where it was just us and God and no distractions. We're trying to get back there. And Jesus is leading us as he saves us from our sins so we can get back to a place of Eden. So he gives us four images today. Four images that I want to present to you that you just heard from Jesus himself. But let's, let's look at these four images, and I want you to see where do you identify with any of these images. And I'm going to ask you to not look at them through eyes of judgment or through eyes of guilt or through eyes of praise. Just receive it and see where do you think you are right now, just right now in this moment in your life. It doesn't tell your whole story. It just says right now. So you know where you want to go. Right? You see, so you got to know where you are right now and where you want to go. What is the cheese that Jesus is dangling in front of you? What is the cheese that you want to go and follow? Right? So the first image that he gives you, Jesus says, so there's a garden that's in front of you. Uh, but sometimes it's like the, the, the gardener. Jesus comes and places the seed in the garden. But what they do is they don't fall in the garden. They actually fall on the path the pathway that's before the garden. And since they're on the pathway, then the birds come, and then he says it's almost like Satan comes, and just can take away the seeds because they haven't been planted yet. So there might be, maybe that's like you, who's like, you know what? I'm not even ready, Father Christian, to even go in the garden. I'm over here on the sidewalk. <laughs> I'm more of a voyeur of the Christian journey. I haven't decided yet if I really want to take that dive. I have my doubts about faith. I'm not sure about this whole Virgin Mary stuff. I, this idea of Jesus dying on the cross, this idea of give me, giving my life over, submitting my life to God, my sins being saved, I don't know if I'm there yet. So that's, that's the first image. But, but you're comfortable enough to kind of maybe stand on the sidewalk. Let me just, let me just watch. <laughs> let me just stand on the sidelines. I'll come to church sometimes. I'll listen to the music. It feels good. I enjoy it. I'll show up at some social organizations, social gatherings. That's cool. You're right here. That's, 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 that's the first image he gives. The second image that Jesus gives is maybe you are now comfortable to get in the garden. And maybe you were really excited to get in the garden. Maybe there was a real big moment. He says that you got in the garden and you jumped right in. And, and there's joy in being here. Maybe you went on one of the short-term mission trips, and when they said, stand up if you want to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you said yes, and you jumped in. Or you went to Curcio, and you jumped in. Or you heard a sermon that enlightened you, and you jumped in. That, that, that uh, you had an experience in your life. You're like, yes, God is so real, and I want to know more. I want to be in the garden. 
but the roots weren't deep. You, you, they, there wasn't enough watering that happened around it. The, the consistency wasn't there of prayer life and worship life and Bible life. So the roots were kind of just, they, they went a little further down. So then when the troubles of life came, or let's say the realities of life came that are different from maybe the emotional experiences we have of, that we have in church, well, the faith wasn't there to back it up. So when the tough times came, it was like, ugh, I'm going to deal with it on my own. I'm going to deal with this on my own. You know, I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not there yet to trust that God's, gonna, God's got my back on this. When I got the diagnosis or when I have to deal with these real struggles that I have of COVID-19 or life just got too busy and so then the sun comes and scorches those roots, right? The third option that Jesus gives us is you are in the garden, you feel real good about the garden. Actually, you read scripture a lot. You actually go to church a lot. You have a very good relationship with God. Actually, things are really good. You got some actually some good roots going here. But you also like the sidewalk because the sidewalk's got some fun stuff too. The secular world has got some real fun stuff too. And, and you're not really ready yet to let go of what's going on over here. There's lights and action and Las Vegas Strip and all the stuff over here that's like, ooh, but I like to get over here and I can do this and then I'll get in the garden too and then I'll get back over here and then I'll go over here. So you're kind of in both. I mean, I can identify with that. I wrote a whole one-man show on that, right? That this idea that this is, this is fun <laughs> and you're not ready yet to go full Jesus. <laughs> and Jesus today in the parable gives us like this idea that's like there's these thorns that will grow in your garden like a rose, and they look beautiful. Oh, they look nice. Oh, they smell real nice in your garden. But when you grab that rose, there's a thorn that actually punctures your skin, and it causes you to bleed. It hurts you. That, that rose is from one of some of the seeds from the secular world that you hold on to a little bit too much. The, I need to have great success in my life. I need to get that high salary because what is it going to look like to my parents if I don't have a really good salary? I got to have this really good education or I just got to meet these needs that are not really me following God, but it's really more me trying to meet the standards of other people, right? I got to prove myself to other people. And so I'm going to hold on to this rose that looks good and smells good on the outside, but really it's just causing me to bleed, and that's going to obscure how deep your roots can go because your nutrients are being pulled out of you. You're being bled. Maybe this rose that you're holding on to is actually not hurting you, but maybe it's hurting someone else. Some of the values that we hold on from the secular world actually is more selfish that it could cause, we might have walked over four other gardens to get to ours and stamped on other people's soil so they can't grow. So really, the blood is their blood. I think in our country right now, we're having a deep reflection on that. <laughs> is that have we unintentionally or intentionally caused the hurt and pain of others and marginalized others for us to be able to excel? All right, that's, that's the big meditation we're having right now, a big discussion called racial reconciliation. What rose have we been holding on to this? It looks good, it looks great, but wait a minute, have others been bleeding because of this? So that's the third image. Now the fourth image that Jesus gives you is that you found your way into the garden and you don't want to leave. You've, you've experienced over here and you said that was good, the secular world was fine, but I, 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 I rode the ride. I bought the t-shirt, I'm good. I want to be deeply rooted in Jesus. I want every source of inspiration to come from Jesus. I want to submit my life to this and I want to bear fruit and I want to bear fruit that is going to really serve this world, that's going to serve the kingdom. And fruit that's not only going to just benefit me, but I feel so alive and so high on God. I feel so content and so full of compassion and so full of generosity. These, the fruit of the Spirit is just being born for me. Kindness and gentleness and compassion and patience and hope. And, and, and it's, it's, it's like not just about me. This, this is growing 30-fold, 60-fold, 100-fold from me. Oh my gosh. But it's not me. It's God. Because God is the seed. I'm just part of a root that's here and I'm being rooted in Him. And what's happening? It's serving others. It's providing shade for other birds to come over because of this fruit that I bear and animals can take the fruit. That's what I've learned to submit myself to. 
see that that in our faith is sort of like what other faiths would call enlightenment or nirvana (laughs) that's that's the goal that's where we want to be and God is saying my gosh if you trust me and to be rooted and feast upon my garden the garden that I give you you will produce an abundance that's beyond your deepest imagination I was reading some scholarship on this, and they were saying, you know, at this time, a Mediterranean return on, on, a, on a farm, farming, you know, sixfold would be nice. Tenfold would be nice. Jesus is talking, I'll give you 30, I'll give you 60, I'll give you a hundredfold return. And the beauty is that no matter what is going on in your life, no matter what chaos is happening, no matter what persecution is going around, no matter what they're saying about you, that you find some joy and peace and contentment because you are rooted in the one and in, in, in the truth and the love of God. And you see how this is affecting and building this world up. See, that, 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 that's contentment. That's, that's the presence. That's the way of love. It's like Paul. Paul in prison. His circumstances were horrible. He's sitting in his own poop in a Roman prison, being persecuted and beaten, but he's writing these letters to to the Christian churches, and he's so full of joy. (laughs) He's so full of peace in his letters because he's rooted in Jesus. He gets all of his nutrients, not from the world, but from God. But this work of being in the garden, oh, we know it's hard. That's why we get out of the garden a lot. We forget about it. We just kind of think, look, well, God will do his thing, right? God is God, so just let him water it, and I'm just going to go do my work over here. It's not how it works. I was talking to Carol McLaughlin uh, the other day. We've been talking a lot about the garden ministry because I think the garden ministry is really going to have its moment of shine here as we start to get to a place where we can soon open the doors at some point, right? And when we, and when we do, that the garden ministry is going to be this wonderful place where it's outdoors, you could be six feet away from each other really easily. You normally wear masks anyways because of allergies. And you got gloves on and you can talk with others, but you got safe distance and you're just in the soil and you're working in God's garden. Tell you, Carol McLaughlin's phone's going to be blown up. But Carol McLaughlin told me, she's like, but you know what, Father Christian? A lot of people come and a lot of people don't stay because it's hard work. Look at our landscape here. These ladies and men are out there, you know, they're, they're sweating their butt away. You know, they're, they're, they're out there. It's, it's hot. I mean, they don't do it during the summer, but in the fall, it's still hot. It's, it's, it's Florida. You're getting dirty. You got to get down on your knees. Your back's going to hurt. But what you're producing, this fruit, it's not about them. I mean, they're, they're doing this to benefit the glory of God, to benefit this beautiful campus. See, when we get in the garden and we do the work, it's not about us. It's not about me. I'm not going just to make me feel better. That's prosperity gospel. I don't just follow God and absorb his word and pray and do this just so I get, you know, more abundance in my life. So I get the bigger salary or the nicer car and look at me, I'm abundant. Abundance is what I do for this world. And look, when I get to my grave, I can look back and say, I ran the race, God. I made this world a better place for Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ. So that gardening is just for the benefit of others. So more seeds go out and more plant others. And then when I do that, I'm not stepping on other garden paths for the downfall of others in order for me to rise up. You know, during seminary, my stepfather passed. And I, and I, and I went up to uh, North to be with my mom at times and to help around the house because my stepfather was a handyman. He was a gardener too. And I went with, you know, big expectations of, 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 of really wanting to help my mom, right? As, as, as any kid, you know, your heart breaks for your mom. And so to go and just be by her and help. And so I am not a handyman and I'm not a gardener, but I do watch YouTube. So I learned all the skills and I got out there and I was like, gosh, this garden is just falling apart. And it was everywhere. It's Jersey. So, you know, everyone loves gardens. So I got out there and started doing the work. And my intent was to help my mom. But I soon learned that Jesus had called me home for me to get in that garden, for me to till and to cultivate my own heart. Uh, because I had, a, you know, I had a complex relationship with my stepfather. Uh, there, there was love there, but it, it, was, it was complex. And the work of being in that garden 
and of pulling out the weeds and learning about what needs to go in there and learning about the different tools that were needed. And I actually found this really good tool finally that allowed me to really rake over and pull the right weeds out there. Um, it was the one with the little spiky wheels that turns around. That thing was incredible. And so once I found that, I could just crush it and just, just tear up all these weeds that had gotten in the way and put new seeds in there. God was working on me for me to grieve and mourn this complex relationship I have with my stepfather as I was gardening. And I had all summer to do it. And just sit there in the sun and sweat and hurt and break my back, but also just see this beauty of God's new garden rising up as I pulled out these weeds and having fresh and organic arugula feed us all summer. When we go with the intent of serving ourselves, that's all you're going to get. But when you go to the garden in order to glorify God and to glorify others, you will heal your own soul. So I don't say this as to pat myself on the back. I, you know, I, as I think any good kid would go, you go to, I went to go and serve my mom. But what God said, great, you do that. But while you're there, I need to work on your heart because you're broken and you're grieving and you're mourning and you need to figure this out. And it took me all summer just tilling away, working on that garden, and in an odd way, honoring my stepfather by doing that work. You're the garden. You are God's garden. What a gift. And there's so much abundance, never-ending abundance. He's planted the seeds. How do you cultivate them? What is your discipline? How do you commit to it more than you do right now? And if you're on the sidewalk, how do you spend more time in the garden? And if you're in the garden, how do you start to deepen more roots? How's your prayer life with God? Every time you pray to God, you're watering your garden. Every time you take time out of your day to pick up the Bible and just look at it for about five minutes, three minutes, or two minutes, it's like you're, you're, you're putting new nutrients on your garden. Every time you stay here at worship and you're here and you're reading the liturgy and you just be present with the liturgy, you're just allowing more, you're showering just good nutrients for God to keep on cultivating and working on you, especially when you're in pain, especially when you're grieving, especially when you're in doubt, especially when you're struggling. Bring it to the garden. God will give you the tool. He'll give you the tool with the little spiky wheels to get in there and weed it all out. With all the tools are there. We have, and, and the Episcopal Church has given us these, these seven steps, these seven steps of the way of love, the way of following Jesus right into the garden. First step, turn. Turn away from what is taking you away from God. Second step, learn. Learn the scripture. Spend time with the scripture. Third step, worship. Spend time just worshiping God water the garden. Four step bless. Who are you blessing in your life every day? Even the woman at the, at the grocery store or the man who you see at the gas station, right? The fourth step is bless. Fifth step is go. How do you now go into the world and to go and do the work that you need to do? And then rest. What is the rest that you need to take? Because even plants got to rest at night. <laughs> And you need to rest or you'll burn out. So those videos, again, um, that we have available for the way of love, will give you a good regiment of how to garden. <laughs> Follow those seven steps of the way of love so you can garden and nurture your garden in order to grow and have such an abundant crop. And imagine all of us as a church, St. Mary's Episcopal Church, producing 30, 60, 90 full for Martin County. Fruit of racial reconciliation, fruit of serving the poor, fruit of healing those with broken hearts, fruit of helping those with addiction, fruit of building community where God can look at us and say, well done. Well done. Get those gardening boots on and let's grow. Let's grow the kingdom of God. What a gift. Amen.